everyone, welcome to our channel. This is Christy. In today's video, I will be presenting four exciting topics for you, including an introduction to the use of Spider X1, an overview of the laser engraving software, laser GRBL and light burn, tips for setting up materials for engraving, and a guide to specific engraving parameters. Let's dive into these topics together and explore them in depth. Firstly, let's talk about the usage of Spider X1, the main difference between Spider X1 and common frame-based laser engraving machines lies in the origin sighting. Spider X1 is a highly flexible DIY model with extendable X and Y axes. The X axis can be extended up to 800 mm, while the Y axis can be extended to 2000 mm or even longer. However, it's important to know that the origin can only be set in the convenient bottom left corner due to the design limitations. Now let's take a look at how to set the origin in laser GRBL and Lightburn software. Open Lightburn. Use a pen tool to draw a rectangle. You can set the origin point for your design here, align it to the bottom left corner. Move the graphic to the bottom left corner of the canvas, recommended 2 mm away from the edge. Here on the bottom right, you can set the working origin point, set it to absolute coordinates. If you are using wireless control via the web, export the G code and upload it. If you are using a wired collection, click move, move the laser height to the desired position, click set origin and then click start. Laser GRBL is set to use the default bottom left origin, no extra setup required. The second difference is wireless engraving. While well, Spider X1 doesn't currently support direct wireless connectivity with laser GRBL and Lightburn, we have developed a solution that allows wireless transmission of G code engraving files through web based IP access. This eliminates the need for an SD card reader and the hassle of constantly inserting and removing TF cards. It also provides a more stable wireless engraving experience, especially for large-scale projects, as it eliminates the risk of engraving failure due to unstable collection. Of course, engraving can still be done through a USB collection, so next I will introduce you to the detailed steps. Before using a wired collection, you need to install the driver on your computer to recognize our device. You can download the driver and find detailed instructions on our website. After successfully installing the driver, connect X1 to your PC using a USB cable and power on the X1. Now let me introduce to you the use of Lightburn and Laser GRBL. Here are the official websites where we can download them for free. Then let us take a look at the interface of Lightburn. This is Lightburn's canvas where all your engraving content should be placed. At the top is the menu bar where you can import files and adjust device settings. This row is the toolbar where you can make various adjustments to your engraving content like size, quantity, and position. This column is the drawing tools containing basic shapes and drawing tools for different designs. At the bottom is the layer panel for your engraving content. On the far right is the control panel where you can adjust engraving parameters. In Lightburn, all engravings are organized into layers. Layers can contain different elements such as images or vector objects. Let's do a quick demonstration for better understanding. Firstly, let's draw a square. It's in black, indicating it's on layer 0. Now switch to layer 1 and draw a circle, it's shown in blue, indicating it's on layer 1. You can right-click on layers here and the flashing graphics indicate which layers contain the corresponding elements. The significance of multiple layers is that we can complete multiple tasks in a single engraving job by applying different parameters to different layers. You can merge them into the same layer. That's the concept of layers. Now let's see how we can use the Spider X1 to achieve the engraving we want. Lightburn supports both image and vector files inputs. These are the supported image file formats, including PNG and JPG. These are the supported vector file formats, including DXF and PDF. 
Generally, image files are used for engraving, while vector files are used for cutting. The parameter settings for these two are different. We are using default settings for these demonstrations. Let's preview to see how it works. In the case of a weird collection, you need to click on the move. Use the directional keys to position the laser height correctly. Then click Set Origin, and finally click Start to commence the job. For awareness collection, you should click Save G-Code, then send the saved G-Code file to the device's TF card via the web interface. After that, you can control X1 through the web interface to start the job. Then I will introduce the interface of LaserGRBL for you guys. These are menu and log bar for file import, configuration and log monitoring, control and movement panel for menu adjustments including speed, direction and distance, Control icons at the bottom used for various functions during engraving. Laser GRBL currently supports image file imports and G-code files. The support for vector files is experimental and limited to SVG files, which are now the mainstream vector file format used for laser engraving. We recommend using images or G-code files when working with laser GRBL. Earlier, we mentioned that GRBL's default origin is side in the bottom left corner. Let's try it out by importing an image. Click Next, adjust the speed and power settings as needed, and then create the job. This way, you've completed the import of the image file. You can click File and then Save Program to export the file. You can operate X1 wirelessly via the web interface to start the engraving process. If you are using a wired collection, make sure to select the correct port, click Collect. Use the directional keys to move the laser height to the desired position. Click Set Origin, and finally click Start to begin the job. Next, we will introduce some considerations for laser engraving different materials, including wood, plastic, and metal. Firstly, let's talk about wood. There are many two types of wood panels, artificial wood and natural wood. Common types of artificial wood include basswood, plywood, and popular plywood, which are suitable for laser engraving and cutting. However, construction used plywood with complex adhesive materials is not suitable for laser engraving and cutting. Common types of natural wood include basswood, popular pine, and camphor wood, which are relatively soft and can be cut. Hardwoods such as walnut, pear wood, bamboo, and beech are more suitable for engraving. Next, let's discuss plastic. Plastic materials are also suitable for engraving and cutting. However, due to the wavelength of blue laser, only opaque plastic materials can be cut and engraved. Additionally, the cutting and engraving process may produce strong and irritating gas, so proper ventilation and protective measures should be taken. Lastly, let's talk about metal. Stainless steel, aluminum alloy, and metal materials with coatings or oxidation treatment can be used for engraving. The engraving effect may vary depending on the laser power. It is important to know that Spider X1 is not capable of cutting metal and attempting to do so is not recommended by following safety procedures, including wearing appropriate personal protective equipment and maintaining a clean workspace, you can achieve better engraving results while ensuring safety. Finally, let me introduce the specific parameter settings for engraving. Speed and power settings are two crucial parameters when using Spider X1, as they play a key role in the successful completion of your work. A common testing method is to collect a small representative piece of material and perform the test on the Spider X1. Firstly, try different power levels and observe the results to determine if the desired effect is achieved. Then adjust the speed parameters according to your needs to further optimize the cutting and engraving results. We also provide you with commonly used cutting parameter settings for Spider X1, and you can go to our wiki to check. At the same time, we have also made corresponding case practices in the open community Spider Make for your reference and learning. I believe that everyone will gradually receive our products. To express our gratitude, we will hold a laser engraving showcase in the next month. We look forward to your active participation in showcasing your talent and creativity. 
by posting your works in our Facebook community. Excellent works will have the chance to win our mystery gift package. This video is over here. In the next one, we will explain the usage of the Spider X1 extension framework. Thank you for your support and attention. See you next time.